Hello, this is Kyle Stallings. It's April 4, 2023. We're here today at the Tice House at the uh, Tomball Museum Center of the Spring Creek County Historical Association. We're here today to interview Magnolia Henry and get some of her memories of Hussmith and Tomball and all the surrounding areas and growing up in this area. This is part of the museum's oral history project and we're recording recollections of Tomball residents that have shaped and formed the history of this great town in this area in Northwest Harris County. You can view this video and others on our YouTube channel at Tomball Museum. Thank you for joining us today, Ms. Henry. Thank uh, you for having me. Could you state your name for us, your full name? Magnolia Matthews Henry. And roughly when were you born? Uh, August 15, 1947. And where were you born? Hubsmith, Texas. And um, who were your parents? Sam, Reverend Samuel and Lucy Matthews. How do you spell Lucy? I've seen that. L-U-Z-Z-I-E. Great. Mm -hmm. And do you have any children? Yes, I have two daughters. What are their names? Luzinda. I almost named after my mother, but that was as far as I could go. It was the L-U-Z <laughs> and Demetria. Great. And your husband's name? H.W. Henry. Is he still living? No, he's deceased. Right. And do you have children and grandchildren? Oh, yes. I have, um, hmm. let's see, four grandchildren, and I have eight great-grandchildren. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Um, can you tell us um, where you all lived uh, when you were growing up as a young, young child in Huff, the Huffsmith area? Uh, we lived on Huffsmith Road, um, approximately a mile from Burroughs Park now, uh, uh, homesteaded. My father had 12 acres of land where we lived and he farmed uh, for the farmer's market uh, on that land, which is now, um, there's a road, Matthews Road, named after the family on said land still. I had that map, is that red dot close to where y'all's place was? Yes, 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 yes it is. Can you hold that up for the camera and he'll get a shot of it later? Certainly. Thank you. That's good. Um, so that was the twelve-acre place, right? Place, right. Mm -hmm. And what what uh, type crops did y'all grow there? Oh, we did corn, peas, potatoes, tomatoes, everything really uh, that a farmer would grow that I can recall. We had peaches, pear trees, uh, all that type of stuff. Mm -hmm. And your dad was reverend. What uh, denomination, what church was he involved with? Baptist. And um, he had, he pastored many, many churches, starting with Pilgrim Hill, which is uh, in Hussmith right now. It's over 140 years old, actually. Which one is that? Pilgrim Hill Baptist Church. Oh. And the Methodist Church, uh, they are both about, you know, same age. Uh, he pastored there from 1946 to 1952. And then he went on to pastor a church in Brookshire and Richard and Rayford. That's all the ones I remember at the moment. All right. Did you yeah. have some brothers and sisters? Oh, yes. I am the youngest of 14, three sets of twins. Yeah. And what are your siblings' names? Oh, gee, wow. <laughs> Some of them. Okay, we got Samuel Matthews Jr., which was my oldest brother. Luella was my oldest sister. Uh, the twins, the first set of twins were Freddie and Eddie, then John, then Rosella, then Will Carnell, then Fanny and Laverne, second set of twins. One only, only one lived. And then Tommy and Tommy Lou and Sammy Sue, third set of twins, only one of those lived. Archie Mae, after her, 
Deborah and then myself. A big group. Yes, yeah. yes, indeed. We had some of the bubbly photos here. Would yes. you mind showing them and, and telling us who they are? Okay, that, this is my sister Tommy, one of the, tw of the last set of twins, and this is myself. Great. Do you remember where you were at the time? I haven't a clue. <laughs> <laughs> but I think we are in town. Yeah. We're on the back of a wagon. We're at the, um, the sawmill. Okay. Yeah. Great. And that's and how what about I was told. One? Okay. Sawmill, same thing, same day, I think. But uh, this is, let's see, this is my mother. She's holding the baby, which is me. I have a sister right here. I don't know if it's the same sister or not. I do not know who this lady is. I, I'm assuming, well, no, I didn't tell. I was assuming it might be my father's mother, who's my grandmother. So I, I, I don't really rightly know, though. <clears throat> I guess you wouldn't remember the names of the, the mules there. Oh, That's no, sir. No, no, sir. Too long ago. <laughs> it looks like a fun day, though. Yeah. Day. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know that. Yeah. Yes, this is leaving Grogan's Lumber Yard. All right. Mm. And this one? All right. These are the same, too. This is my sister, Tommy, and myself. Yeah. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Can you tell about how old you might have been at that? I... What's well, calling myself trying to recollect that? I think I'm maybe three. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she got some wonderful pictures, didn't she? Mm -hmm. and oh, and they are all over the world. She has some. I, I saw some from New York and everywhere on her uh, on the computer. Okay, these are. This is Amelia Edwards. This is her mother, Aura Edwards, and they have the Mister. Uh, they, this picture, they said John Wright. I don't know him. Okay. I'm not familiar with him, and I don't know anybody else on them. All right. I don't know them. Great. Thank you. Uh -huh. so. Um, so let's start back with your dad. Um, where was he from? Do you know? Louisiana. Does that show when he was born? Uh, he was born in 1898. How did he get over to the uh, Mississippi I do not know. Um, I do not know. Uh, I, 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 oh, how he got here? Yeah. He came, he worked the railroad, the Great Northern Railroad. And I have tried to contact him to them to see about, um, you know, with his social to try to get when he was there and hiding them. Because the railroad line came from Navasota to Husband. Every town that the railroad moved, they moved. They, uh, I have sisters born in B dies, Dacus, so forth, so on Richard, Texas, and all of that. All the way down the line, the railroad line. So he started in Houston. Now I don't know how he got to Houston or anything like that because I have my older the oldest brother and sister were both born in Houston and everything everybody after that was coming this way. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. And so then it looked like when you got to the Hussmith area and Tomball area, y'all stayed. Right, right, right. Do you know what he was doing for the railroad? Yes, laying uh, railroad ties. That's the yeah. uh, only thing that, you know, job that a black person would have during those years. And then when he got here, he mainly did farming and, and working at the churches? Farming, yes. He started farming. Uh, I, I was told he wasn't where he is, where we are now. He lived up further and was sharecropping uh, before he purchased the homestead that. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you know what place he was sharecropping on? Have you heard? Have I imagine I did. I can't recall if I did. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, no, I don't have a, right. a clue about that. Where did he get his ordination or study to be a pastor? I don't know that either. I have uh, requested some of his because he had gotten um, accommodation from the Baptist Union something something and uh, but I, I, I haven't gotten a hold of it yet and you know like that. Great. <clears throat> and um, 
So it looked, sounded like he was mainly farming. Was he involved in other uh, activities or businesses around Tomball? Or? Oh, absolutely. He was, uh, he taught other families how to farm. He also uh, farmed for the farmer's market. He also led uh, the 4-H club uh, for Huffsmith community. And uh, he was instrumental in getting the HOE water company that we have now in, in Huffsmith uh, up and running. Where was the farmer's market? Have you ever heard? I think it was the one on the airline, because oh. that's the one that's been there forever. I see. Uh, as far as I know. Great. Where is that water system that's still in It Huff is in Hussabeth, yes. Is it like a water well and tanks and all that? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, when you were growing up in the Hussabeth area, what do you remember being there? Stores or whatever? Okay, we had... Uh, uh, the post office was, if you're going north, the post office would have been on your left, and Wyrick's store would be on your right, where Mel's is now. Yeah. And we had a service station, one service station, and we had a, uh, uh, what was it? I guess it was a juke joint on the corner of Stalland and um, Huffsmith. Stalland? Stalland. I, I can never say that yes. correctly. <laughs> yeah. I've never known how to pronounce mm -hmm. it. Either. Yeah. Um, and, and what churches were in the area there? Pilgrim Hill and the Methodist Church has been there forever, as far as I know. And in the place that's called uh, the Quarters, which is right across the railroad track to the right, that little uh, section of uh, homes over there. There was a sanctified church in that area, and also the Church of Christ, which is still there now. Mm -hmm. um, tell me about the schools that you went to. Okay, the school I went to was Huffsmith, and it started like, well, of course it started first grade, but it only went through the eighth grade. Two of my sisters no, my sister and my brother went to the eighth grade, so there was nowhere else for them to go. The principal of the school at that time, name was Erie D. Yates. Her husband is the, his father was the founder of Yates High School, okay? And so she allowed my sister and brother to go to her house when she lived in the Heights. One of the, her house is one of those historic houses where the bricks are, you know, for the slaves and everything. And uh, they would go down there and go to Yates during the week. And we would, my mother and father and I and some of the other kids remember that home then would go and pick them up on weekends. And uh, she let them live with her. She had no children. And they completed their high school at Yates High School. And they both went on to graduate from TSU. My sister taught, uh, was a teacher for 31 years in the HISD school district. My brother was a printer for the Washington Times. He and which Washington. brother and sister were those? Those were uh, after the twins. After the twins, John, Fred and Ed, then there was John and Rosella. Those were the two. And everybody after them went to Huffsmith. By this time, we had gotten to the 12th grade. We were able to go from uh, kindergarten to the 12th grade in the school, and that's where I graduated from. And which school was that? Where was it physically located? It, is lo it was located on, um, I think that's Huffsmith Corville, where the Samuel Matthews Park is across the door. Kirkendall. Kirkendall? Husband of Kirkendall. Husband of okay, because <laughs> it wasn't that bad. Uh, Is it across the street from the old Goodson sort of? Thing? Yes, yeah. yes. It's a further up, uh, right across the street over there, yeah. yeah. I don't know the business that's called now, but uh, at first, Tomball had it as an elementary school, I do believe, or intermediate one, I don't recall which. I think that's now it's like American 
Yeah, it's American something because all the yeah. trucks are yeah. like flags. American flag, right? <laughs> right. So yeah. um, I think that's where I went to seventh and eighth grade. So oh, really? it kind of changed around for oh, yeah. through the years. But yeah, that, yeah. That's the school you attended, right? Yeah. 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 Do you remember some of your teachers there? Oh, yeah. 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 What, what were their yeah. names? The, the Erie D. Yates, Reverend. Um, Green was the principal out after her. I don't know if it was the only one after her. That's all I can remember right now. All right. Yeah. Right. What year did you graduate from the high school? Then? 1964. And at the time, was it all black? Was it, oh, uh, yeah. Was it before Absolutely. desegregation? Oh, yeah. Right. yeah. Yeah. That didn't happen until 1966. I see. Um, what are some of the other families that you had in your neighborhood there, do you recall? Okay, we had the Edwards, the Taylors, the Greens, we had the uh, Lees, uh, Johnson, oh my, uh, Davises, Jeffries, Simmons. Uh, Shannon, that, that was a few of them. Mm -hmm. Do you remember all the trains going back behind that school? <laughs> yes, so you could hardly miss that. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So earlier you mentioned the Edwards family to us in this one photo. Yes. Uh -huh. um, this was the Edwards, right? Yes, those were the Edwards. And, um, Amelia Edwards uh, was a uh, cook at Hooks Airport, and she's featured in this book. I don't know if it is. This uh, Choose in Tomball. You I've might be familiar that. with that. Uh huh. That, yes. Yeah, she's in here along with my father's in here as well. So a lot of uh, those are the. Two black families that were noted in, in this that's book. A, that's mm -hmm. an interesting book, yeah. Yeah. I've got a copy of that. Okay. So, anything else you remember about the Edwardses? Oh, it was a bunch of them. It was a lot of them. Yeah. And uh, the, uh, what was, the the mother of Ora Lee Edwards, that we had the Eastern Stars and, and whatever the juniors were called at that time. I remember that because it was a hall in the <clears throat> quarters that they'd held all the meetings, Eastern Stars, and the men were, what are they, Son Sonics, <laughs> yeah. And the, all the meetings were held there. I remember uh, being with them and going every, however often we'd go to those meetings as Eastern Star Juniors, more or less. And mm. what type of organization was that? It, it, it. Eastern Stars. It was kind of like a. Uh, it was an organization for churches to get together, and they were kind of like, uh, what would you call a sorority type thing, mm -hmm. if you will. Mm -hmm. Great. And who is this in this photo? All right, this is Mr. Ari Taylor. They called him Shine because he shined shoes, and he was always he. Uh, being Tom Ball always in shining shoes for everybody. And he had a large family as well. The Taylors, uh, they have a large family also. Where did the Edwards family live? They lived in Hussmith in the quarters area, like uh, Mara Street. They lived there first. I think they moved on the next street over after some years later. And how about the Taylor family? They lived in the same area, mm -hmm. in the same area. What do you remember about the, the store that was there, Wyrick's store? Oh, yes, Wyrick's. Yeah, well, they were a very friendly family. I, I remember they were very nice and cordial. Uh, when we go with, after the post office was on the left side, they moved it over to the right side and combined it with Wyrick's store. So you could go into the post office and go out and go into the store. And um, so, tell us about your church and your church gatherings and how how that was with your family and. Okay, the churches used to go on the first and 
third Sunday would be, be would be Baptist, and the second and fourth would be Methodist, which is the church right across, you know, there together. Somehow they um, got together, and I, I maybe it wasn't enough people. I don't know what their reasoning was, but those would be the days that they'd have. Everybody would go to the Methodist church, or everybody would go to the Baptist church, either or, whichever day, depending on whatever day it was. And uh, it, it was it was a good thing because you know that's where only place you had to go really to to conversate to communicate all after a hard week of whatever and so yeah it, it was really good I, the Methodist church was a little boring for me but yeah, I didn't have a choice so <laughs> yeah but it it was. It was the thing to do at that time, not, not like these children today, you know. You, you can't even make them go to church, half of them. But that was all we had to do. Mm -hmm. Boy, we looked forward to going to church and the school. That how, was it. How was the music in them, do you remember? Oh, of course, of course. The music in the Baptist church was always lively, but Methodist, again, here we go. Kind of boring. <laughs> <laughs> kind of boring, yeah. But... Um, it, it was very profitable for the community at that time because we, we were close-knit community and everybody. I even remember that our house burned uh, to the ground one, one time and, and we had no place to go. And the Methodist church let us live in the parsonage. The Baptist church did not have a parsonage. And they let us live in that parsonage until my dad could get his, the house built again. And it... Yeah, remember roughly what year that was, or how old you were? I was I, I was like about twelve years old um, when that happened. Somehow that sticks in my mind, so I guess it is. But uh, yeah, yeah, that's I don't know. So I think it's difficult for people of our younger ages to uh, to imagine when you're growing crops and selling them at a farmer's market. Can you describe how that worked for your family? Okay, yes, we all had to work, everybody, no matter what, the season, whatever my dad planted, we all had to get out there. Of course, we had to because it was the livelihood, okay, and then he would um, gather, even after that, we bailed hay at a neighboring farm, that's how I learned how to drive at 12 years old, and even when my brothers and sisters, they weren't, you know, after they grow, were grown and married and went away and come back home, I'd be their chauffeur. And you didn't even worry about the driver's license. The police didn't even stop you or anything like that. At 12 years old, I was taking them from the house to my sister's house or my brother's house or something like that. But uh, So you started out on a tractor and then quickly moved to a car or a truck? Yes, a truck, because we had a truck forever. My mother didn't even know how to drive, and uh, one of my older sisters and brothers, they took her, um, if you're going up Hussmith, it's that hill right up just before it turns into, what is that, Steuben Airline? Or, let's see, I'm going up Hussmith, and I live down there. Yeah. Uh, Steuben Airline, 2978. Right, yeah. And, no, it's up on the hill, right going towards Burroughs Park uh, okay. and um, they took her and they got out and they told her if she wanted to get back home she'd have to drive. She drove home and she drove ever since then until she got sick. <laughs> yeah. So had, had, to, had to learn or uh, it's the only way to get home. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Interesting. Sure enough. Mm. So one of the crops you mentioned was was cotton. We've had a here at the museum a little patch of cotton just to demonstrate. Mm -hmm. Do you remember helping with the cotton? No, 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 no. no I didn't yeah. do that. No, How about any crops that you enjoyed, oh, yeah. enjoyed more than others? Oh yes, of course. The berries, the pears, the, all the sweet things, the watermelons, all of that. Yeah, that I can do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and we share with everybody. If my daddy killed a hog. We got to go. We got to take it to everybody. Everybody got some. And, and all the neighbors did that, though. Yeah. Yeah. So when one family killed a hog or a cow, uh -huh. they, all, they had kind of like sharing. Yes, out. yes. Uh -huh. Later, as you grew up, uh, 
like high school age, do you have memories of that? Or do you want to share with us how, how that was? Oh, yeah. I, I, I enjoyed school from day one, although I went when I was three because no one was able to stay at home with me, so I had to go to school. So I had no problem with school for anything. My father was very strict, however. Every girl was the basketball captain. Well, by the time I got up in high school, there was no one else home. So the the ritual has always been, if you go, you have to take your sister. So I'm out of sisters now. <laughs> so my dad is not, hey, you can't go. So here I am, the basketball captain, but I can only be the basketball captain at home games. What sense does that make? Finally, the Mr. Jennings was our coach, and he talked and talked and talked to my dad just to get me to go to a tournament we had won for because they didn't have a captain. I was the captain. God bless this for it. Anyway, I, I still, my childhood and high school and everything was great. I, I, I have no problem. They say we were poor. I can't tell you. I don't know how that happened because I knew nothing about that. Nothing. And everybody got along good, black, white, whatever. Everybody was just a good community. Mm -hmm. yeah, it seemed like all the families were pretty close back then uh, from what I've heard about it. So mm -hmm. just, can you give us a sense? It was much smaller back then, right? Smaller? Smaller communities. Oh, so, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Everybody knew everybody. Yeah, of course. Uh huh. And I mean, it was nothing like it is today. You know, you could go. I remember... Uh, we, my sister, the same sisters in the picture. I don't know. I guess we must have been together a lot. <laughs> but we would walk. We would walk down the side. You know, we had ditches on each side of the road, and and they would throw out soda water bottles. Well, that was worth three cents, and we'd go walk it and get a soda water bottle, go to Warwick's and buy whatever. You know, you you could go and come, leave your door open, and all of that stuff. But don't do that today. No, don't don't try it. A lot safer back then. Yes, much, much. What have you done since high school? What type uh, of professions have you been in? Well, I, my parents got me a job. I did not get the job. I wasn't looking for a job because I was planning on having a one summer of nothing. Yeah, I'm 12 years, you know, it's 12 years. I've, I've gone to finish high school. I'm 16 years old. I deserve that. Well... I graduated on a Sunday. Monday, I was packed and ready to go to work in NASA. I worked for an astronaut. Um, he did go up once on Apollo 9. Swikart uh, was his name. And I'd go there, and I'd work, and I'd go to college three days a week. And I'd stay there and work until I didn't work there anymore. And uh, then I went on to... Uh, Let's see, what did I do? I married, I left, I, I, I stayed gone a long time. I traveled with my husband, trained racehorses, so we were always gone. And then after I returned back, after my grandfather passed uh, in 74, and so then I went to work, um, I worked for Lynn Wyatt for 12 years, but that was later on in like um, the late, 90s. And after that, I went to work at uh, Kelsey Sebo, where I retired in 2016. And uh, then I had gone to school. I, I went to school to be a massage therapist. I, what else did I do? Um, CPR instructor, notary. I did all these things because I said, I'm going to need this when I retire then I wouldn't have to work so much. Okay, so that's what I do now if I do anything. Yeah. You, I understand you've been helping out at the Tomball Branch Library with the book project, right? Oh, yes, yes, I did. That was interesting because I was, like I had said before, I wanted to know where the history of Huffsmith was. It was non-existent, and I, and I wanted to know why. And so I got to be friends. First, I got to the library, I worked on a grandparents program. And uh, that's how I got to be uh, friends with Kyla and also Kay 
Kay was the one that introduced me to the bubbly pictures. She, she came and got me one day. She said, come go upstairs. I want to show you these pictures. I said, it might be your auntie or somebody. <laughs> but it was me and my sister. <laughs> so uh, that's how I saw those uh, and everything. So then after I stopped working for the grandparents program, I went back to Kelsey and worked again and retired from them again. And they said, come back. I said, I'm not playing with y'all no more. I done retired twice. That's enough. So <laughs> that's when I started re um, volunteering with Kyla and I helped her with uh, the um, the project that the chaparral that just came through with the I helped with that, and then she said, well, come and be on the Tongue Ball book. I said, oh, Carla. So <laughs> that's how I got to be on the Tongue Ball book at this present time. Mm -hmm. well, we appreciate you volunteering and appreciate you coming today. No, oh, no problem. Any other ancestors that you've looked into that you've found out about? Um, my grandfather, oh, my, my grandfather, who was my mother's father, and my grandmother, I know more about them than my father's. What were their names? Uh, John Taylor and Emma Miles Taylor. Whereabouts did they live? Uh, they lived in Houston. My, my grandfather retired from Houston, too. And uh, my grandmother, well, when she uh, became ill, she lived with us until she passed away. But they were both in Houston. But from Louisiana, all of them from Louisiana. And her name was? Emma, Emma. Miles Taylor. Uh -huh. Is it M-I-L-E-S or M-Y? E-M-M-A, Emma. Emma, but what, how do you spell Miles? M-I-L-E-S. Okay. Uh -huh. So you had lots of siblings and their families. Did they stay around the area? Did they move off? Or? Oh, yeah, most of them. Uh, now, I had some brothers. They stayed here. Some of them married some of the women in the, in, you know, from Huffsmith. Uh, my one brother married a, a, a lady from Magnolia, and uh, but most of them left, and they all eventually went uh, from Tomball. They didn't live out here too long because my uh, the brother was a printer. He he retired and uh, from Washington Times, and he lived in Washington D.C. And then uh, one of the twins lived in Tennessee, and one of the other twin lived in Houston. And yeah, mostly they just went, you know, their different ways. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. It sounded like with your family being so large, your older siblings had a lot of child care. But did, did you have any uh, kin folks and babies when you were growing up that you helped take care of? All of them. All, all, all of them. <laughs> Because <clears throat> my brother, my brothers were so much older than I, and well, when they had children, they they would need me to babysit. Okay, I'd go from house to house on weekends. Everybody was, you know, I was in much demand, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I kept a lot of them, a lot of my uh, nieces and nephews. Yeah. Right. So tell us about uh, Sam Matthews Park mm. over there. How did that come about? Okay, there was um, accommodation given my father. Let's see now, I got that. Nathan sure. By uh, Squatty Lyons. Mm -hmm. Do you remember him? You, yeah, you he probably, was a commissioner uh -huh. in right. Harris County, right? Okay, yes. Okay, so it was under his. Um, that he was named, because the park was Huffsmith Park to begin with. And, uh, but with his recommendations, they renamed it to Samuel Matthews Park in 1984. And with the stipulation that the park's name could never be changed, thank God, because when Broussard's park got uh, where they put it now, they had some confrontation because they wanted to change the name to Broussard Matthews Park. So it sounded like your dad was quite influential in, in the community all over Tomball and Huffsmith, right? Yes, yes. Both of my parents were. They, they, uh, they both worked very, very hard and they were very...
very uh, 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 dedicated to Huff Smith and, and to the people and the community, the church and everything, you know. Do you remember celebrating holidays in your oh, community? Oh, yes. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Mr. Lakey, if you, I don't know if you remember the Lakeys and Johnsons that were right just before you crossed the track on the left-hand side and you had watermelons. Every year you'd have the biggest watermelons ever. And, uh, of course, the 19th of June was a great celebration. And um, uh, until, you know, I think Spring Creek Park, we had our family reunion there once, uh, one year. And, uh, oh, yeah, it was, the celebrations were great. We always, uh, families, you know, we get together and, and, and we'd all... Uh, we had a great basketball team at the school too. They had we had a lot of celebrations for those. They were, we had a team of the men's basketball team were almost as good as the Globe Trotters. Wow! Really, and I, I'm 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 looking still to find our memorabilia that we had a great trophy case. I don't know what happened to all of that stuff at the school. Yes, yeah. at Huffston School, it's it's just vanished into thin air. Do you know where they would go to play their games? Oh, yes. We would go hunts as far as Huntsville, uh, 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 Prairie View. Uh, Prairie View is all the tournaments would be held in Prairie View. And all the surrounding uh, air schools around here. Uh -huh. well, who, who like Sealy and... Yes, I'm sorry. Who were some of the stars on the, the uh, men's team that you recall? Lonnie Osborne. Um, William Holiday, my brother Will Matthews, they said he was really good. I can't see that, but <clears throat> anyway, uh, Johnsons, they were tall. They were all so tall, so they were always on the basketball team. And who else? Um, hmm, that's about all I can think of right now, yeah. You remember who else was on the women's basketball team with you? Oh, um, yeah, the Johnsons, like I said, the ladies were tall, too. <laughs> <laughs> the Johnsons, uh, the Matthews, our family, um, uh, everybody, if, if you were there, you played basketball because it was, you know, the thing to do. It was nothing else to do. Basketball, baseball, track, all of that. You and know. what position you played on the team? Yes, I was a guard. Uh -huh. Have any memorable games? Mm. No, not 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 so much. The the women were good, but we weren't as good as the men. You know, they they won. We won a couple of tournaments, of course. But uh, I mean, the the guys would win, and I mean, they would want to get with them. You know, and <laughs> we'd have to get on the bus and go really quickly mm -hmm. because they were they were not happy yeah. the uh, losing team. But yeah, they were really good. Tell us about the house you grew up in. Is do you remember the one that burned? Uh huh. What was it like? It was a four bedroom, uh, just a frame house. Uh, it, was, it was roomy, roomy, and uh, it was very homely, <laughs> if you will. <laughs> yeah, but uh, because there was so many of us, you know, we had to have much room and everything, but. And there was a big tiny berry tree out in the middle of the yard that I would hide in because I didn't want to do anything. And then oh, uh, there would be some confrontations, of course. <laughs> we would have problems. But uh, as far as the house itself, and we had great, great traditions. Everybody ate together. We prayed together, of course, my father being a minister, of course. And... Uh, all of the things that was, you know, that we did, we had to do together. And we were a close-knit family. A lot of um, uh, my brothers and sisters, I like I see brothers and sisters fight today. That was unheard of. But I was a fighter. I wouldn't fight my brothers and sisters, but I'd fight other people. <laughs> so, but all in all, it was, it was a great time for me. Do mm -hmm. you have any memories of favorite recipes from your family? Yes, I do, and, and regretfully, I don't know them. I don't have them written down, and, and we talk about that, my sisters and I, that uh, we did not get my mother's recipes, you know. 
What, and what it, were the most memorable? Blueberry dumplings. I don't know where they came from, <laughs> but that would be, you could, we were ready to go and pick the blueberries because we knew that's what she was going to fix, you know. Yeah, and, and uh, she made something that was called tomato dumplings, and I don't even know uh, anything close to that recipe. But it was it was sweet to be tomatoes. You would think, you know, it wouldn't be so sweet, but that's what she made with dumplings, too. I'm sure she was just trying to make do with all those children. <laughs> I'm sure she made up some recipes from somewhere. In addition to farming, did you have cows or other type oh, of animals? Yeah, cows, chickens, hogs, uh, yeah, the works. We had them. Mm -hmm. Did you enjoy helping take care of the animals? Uh, somewhat. I, I, they was, when they were little, they were my friends, and, and then Daddy would kill them, and that would make me unhappy. <laughs> and I remember one, one hog, I don't remember the name, but I said, I'm not eating it. I'm not, I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not doing it. I can't eat no bacon, and need to kill my friend, and da 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 da. But uh, about three days later, yeah, I had to go on. on. Yeah, I had to <laughs> get rid of my, my, I had to go on and, and, and say, I, I'm hungry now. <laughs> oh, but it was fun. We had great times. So um, after the house burned, do you remember the process of building the new one? Seemingly, it didn't take them long, but I know it had to have taken longer than I can remember it being, you know, because... Uh, we all couldn't live in the parsonage. We all, you know, some of my sisters and brothers lived elsewhere. It wasn't as, it wasn't all of us were not there. Uh, so I'm saying, like, myself, Deborah, May, Fanny, Tommy, one brother. So uh, about six, six of us was home then because all my other, older brothers and sisters had either gone off to the military or married or whatever. Yeah, so, but still, in all, we couldn't all stay there. It was a small parsonage, and I sometimes remember staying with my friend, uh, Selma Jean, down the way. Her dad was the Thomas, uh, Date Thomas, or Lawrence Thomas, his name was. I'd stay with them sometime and everything, yeah. But it, it I, I know it took them a long time to build that house because, uh, they made it larger for one thing. That had to take more time and added on a garage and a, a den. We didn't have that in the original home. Mm -hmm. so. Did your family have any that were involved in World War II? I think one brother, one of the twins, because he would, he, you know, sometime talk about... Uh, the war, and he said, don't ever let anyone tell you that, that anybody can go to war and come back the same way, you know. Mm -hmm. Do you remember any uh, particular buildings or businesses or around the Tomball area that had come to mind? Well, mm, the telephone company, my mother worked at the telephone company, and she'd let me come up and and uh, be with her sometimes. Yeah, I remember that. Of course, I remember Braddock and Klein, um, the Guarantee Bank. So during the break, we were talking about some work that your dad did with the Heller guys? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that. Well, all I know is that, that uh, he was instrumental in helping my father uh, purchase the property there where our homestead is. Not, it is not there anymore. But uh, some of us do live on the property because they had deeded each. Before my parents became ill or anything, they had the land divided, separated, deeded. Everybody got their own acre of land. So therefore, they'd have to pay their own taxes and everything. But the Hilda guys, the father, was somehow instrumental in helping my father purchase that property. And before my father died and before the Hilda guys, uh, a person died, I took him over there to their home, and they just had a ball talking, reminiscing, and going on, yeah. That was Bruce Hilligay's father? Father, right. yes. Mm -hmm. Great, thanks. And yes. then you also mentioned that uh, 
your family was involved with um, Judge Tarleton and his daughter. Yes. Magdalene Tarleton. Yes. Tell us about that. They, uh, I don't know what my father did for them, but I know my mother worked in the house. And uh, he was, he, my father did whatever he did, but anyway, they, he gave my father some properties uh, in the Huffsmith area and just gave it to him. And then he rented, we rented the houses for a while, and I guess my father got tired of that, and so he sold some of the properties. I even had one of my brothers lived in one of the properties, and then his son lived on the property. Now it's Hispanics, they live there. And yeah. What did you know about or remember about <clears throat> Magdalene Charlton? Yes, I recall that she was ill and um, that they were a very close family as well, and, and that she did have cancer, as far as I remember. And uh, she would try to make arrangements, uh, make it available for her parents, so when she did pass away, they could be self-sufficient. Uh, in the early 1960s, they helped establish this museum, and the property that we're on now, a lot of it was given by their family. Okay. Uh, from what we understand, it's uh, Judge Charlton was big into history, and then Magdalene was also. So it's a, yes, a, a nice right. legacy that they it left is. behind. It them. is. Yes. <clears throat> you remember anything about Elsa about the Charltons? They were very nice. I, I'd go. To, of course, I went everywhere, but um, I could go to their house, and they were. I was just like I was at home. I was just roam around. <laughs> House and everything, they were very nice, very nice. Um, All right. Also, when we were on break, we were talking about, uh, in Tomball, it, it was a pretty good atmosphere to where we didn't have the racism right. that a lot of southern places had, right? right? Can That's you describe true. that for us? Well, because I, I, I think everybody was probably in the same situation, you know, nobody... Uh, I'm sure there were some more well off than others, but uh, I remember going to meetings with my father, like uh, the councilman meetings. I don't know why, but I remember that. <laughs> and everybody was just the black and the white, and they were all discussing all of the, you know, their whatever their plans were. And it was no problems, no confrontation, even though my father worked for some of them. You could not tell it by their conversation because it was not a a boss, you know, thing, relationship. They, they didn't even talk in that manner. And uh, whatever uh, that my father had, you know, if he were, was fruits, vegetables, whatever, uh, whatever type of work he was doing, they would utilize it, and he could utilize what, like your father, at the tractor company, those kind of things. But it was never any black-white issue uh, that I can recall. About how far into her life did your mom start learning how to drive? Oh my! You remember roughly I'm how old she was? Fifties, in her fifties, of course, because I was. She was forty. 47 when she had me, so I was big enough to remember that. So I'm like, I was like seven, eight, nine, maybe. Yeah, she was in her 50s. And can you describe for us growing up how it felt like nowadays we have televisions and cell phones and iPads? And what, what was the difference in growing up in, in earlier times? Well, my mother was a great storyteller. She she told stories very well, and I remember that. But that was that was nothing. We didn't miss the TV, of course. We never had one. But, uh, we were not bored, like these children say they're bored to. And that's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. We had plenty to do, plenty to do, whether we wanted to do it or not. And you played outside. You you did that, and you were glad to be outside. You wanted to, if you had a friend you could go visit, oh my goodness, you were really lucky. <laughs> and it was normal. Everything was just seemingly the way it should have been, yeah. you know. So we, we didn't really have in this area, like buses or 
trains. Do you remember how y'all got around when you were younger? Um, bicycles, walking? Uh, walking, walking. When I got a bicycle, I was 12 years old. I had to shell a tub of corn. I will never remember, never forget it. A number three tub of corn I had to shell. They was going to give me this bicycle anyway. I know they were. But <laughs> I had to buy, I had to shell this acre, uh, uh, tub of corn in order to get that pink and white Schwinn bicycle. And that was way later. I walked all forever. A funny story. <clears throat> when I finished high school and I went to NASA and my dad would pick me up on the weekends and bring me home. Well, my sister picked me up this weekend, right? So prior to my, my leaving, we had a push lawn, but this was in 1964. There was no need for us to have a push lawnmower, but anyway, we had a push lawnmower. And when I went to NASA and came home, wasn't two weeks, maybe three, my dad was riding on a riding lawnmower. I was so out <laughs> of uh, riding lawnmower, and we needed that. We should have had that a long time ago. But anyway, he had a push lawnmower for me that I had to cut that grass every Saturday. <laughs> He was out of riding lawnmower when I got back. Yeah. That's... Made, it, made it a lot easier. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Hmm. Any other family member, memories that you have, that, or stories about your dad? Well, okay. Uh, my brother, one year, uh, my father had gone to work, and he told my brother, this was the youngest brother that was the last one at home, to fertilize the cornfield before, you know, what well, we knew to do it before we got home, of course. And he had messed around all that day with his friends and everything and didn't do it. It was time almost for Dad to come home. So he ran hurriedly to fertilize the corn, but instead of fertilizer, he got cement. Mm. He, <laughs> yeah, he did it all over the cornfield. That night it rained like never before. Mm -hmm. The uh, cornfield was white as snow. My dad wasn't happy, of course, needless to say. However, this yielded the best corn crop ever. It is uh, noted in the Agriculture Department in Prairie View today. I cannot find it. I'm still looking for that. It's amazing. That was interesting. Yeah. That was really interesting. Great story. Yeah. <laughs> Any other stories that come to mind that you remember? Um, let's see. Okay, I have another brother, the twin, one of the twins. He and my father didn't get along too well sometimes, and he stole my dad's cow, sold it, and went to the army. That. That's what I heard. <laughs> that was interesting. Yes. How was that homecoming when he came back from the war? <laughs> uh, it was great. It was great. Unbelievably great. I guess my daddy had time to think about it. I yeah. don't know. Great. Yeah. So tell us about the medical back then, doctors, and how, what would y'all do for medical? We didn't. We didn't. Uh, I have a sister that, that was um, 13 years old. That's second born. Now, you know, this had to be a story because I wasn't there. The, she liked basketball, and um, the, I don't think we had a basketball. And whoever had the basketball, she asked him, you know, to play with it or whatever. And he thrust it, according to my sister, and it hit her in the stomach and did some damage. And we did not have a doctor. And she died at the age of 13. Mm. Yeah. Did you have some home remedies in the family? Home remedies? I imagine so, of course. The, the yeah, yeah, we had some. I, 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 you know, like the, the what is the what is that stuff that they put on you when you stick a nail in your foot? Uh, kerosene. Yeah, he put kerosene on it and uh, things of you know that nature, but. <clears throat> and then, of course, all of the uh, black drops and the castor oils and <laughs> all of that kind of stuff. 
but nah, that's about all I remember. Did y'all ever take a train trip? Yes. I remember uh, trains? Yeah, where, we'd where go to you? Louisiana to see my mother's uh, family, and yeah, that's what I remember, she and I going on the train. Did you go into Houston to catch it? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. What do you remember about the train and the trip? Oh, fantastic. Anything to go somewhere was just amazing. <laughs> and the food, she fried chicken in the cake. I remember that, uh, you know, with our travels. And, oh, yeah, it was very enjoyable, very. That school had a gymnasium there that was kind mm -hmm. of rounded top, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Do you remember much about that gymnasium? Oh, I, I remember, yeah, that's where all the games, you know, the basketball, all the dances and everything, that's where they were held in that mm -hmm. uh, gymnasium. The concerts and uh, you know, I was in the glee club and, you know, all those things was held in the gymnasium. So tell us about the reunions that your families had. You said they started out at Spring Creek Park and then now are at St. Matthew's Park? Right? Yes, uh, ever since. Uh, well, we would have them at the Huffsmith Park before it became uh, Sammy Matthews Park uh, as well. But after that, of course, in 1984, it's when it became Sammy Matthews Park. We've had our uh, reunions there if we had one because, of course, we this will be the first one we're having since COVID, yeah. But the reunions have been real good, really, really good. Uh, uh, we've had quite a few family members to attend, and we're looking for a great turnout this year as well. Great. Mm -hmm. Do you have any other memories of that you've heard about or you want to share with us about this, this whole North Harris County, South Montgomery County area? Well, mm, the parades are nice. I, I go to parades every year. The uh, Tomball Parade that they have in November, the Christmas, I guess it's Christmas Parade. Uh, those are very nice. I, I try to, <laughs> uh, there's a family that lives right straight up uh, Husmith Road that dead's in and goes down to Kirkendall. And they had a, a, a a donkey that I wanted to ride in this parade. And she said, if you can catch him, you can ride him. Well, it took me all day long. I never did catch the donkey, but the parade was good. <laughs> <laughs> so I wanted to ask you, while we have the chance, the, you remember the bridge going across uh, Spring, Spring Creek, Creek mm -hmm. just north of Hussmith? Mm -hmm. what, what are some memories you have about that area? I, I, only thing I, well, the boys could swim. They would not allow the girls to go down there. So I didn't know much about it. But I know that's where Charles Martin, who was the pastor of Pilgrim Hill before he passed away, he broke his neck in that pond over there. I remember that. Mm. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm.